Okay, I don't know if I told you this last week, but they changed the interface. So now I'm even more confused. But right now it tells me it's setting up my meeting. And now it says I'm live. Okay, hello, and welcome to TN New Book Tuesday. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear me, but there are a, there's a lot of noise pollution today. We've got, I think we're testing the fire alarms. Uh, the weather alarms have also gone off because we're having a very weird weather week. So prepare for interruptions, unfortunately. Just is what it is. Okay, so let's share our screen temporarily because I have so many giveaways. I want, but I want to share my screen. There we go. That's the button I need. Welcome to T and New Book Tuesday, MPL's pre-order preview. So I'm going to go over books that. Mobile Public Library has pre-ordered and are coming out in June. In general, we try to have them ready as soon as we can so that we can send them to branches uh, to be checked out on their release date. Because of COVID, that doesn't always work out, but that's the goal. So you can put them on hold now because they're already in the catalog. Today, we're gonna discuss some romance fiction and some historical fiction. So I know you guys like your historical fiction. What I just read and what I'm drinking. Okay. I just finished Work Shirts for Mad Men by George Singleton. I read it for an outside of the library project, a podcast that I'm working on. Um, I did not like it. <laughs> I really had to force myself to finish it and it's only 140 pages long. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get back to reading One Last Stop by Casey McQuinton, which we're gonna talk, to, talk about in a minute because I'm way more into that book and I had to set it aside to finish this one. Also, I really needed some caffeine because I'm super tired today. So instead of my usual tea, I'm having a, a Dr. Pepper uh, because I, I, I need the jolt, I need the caffeine. Today's giveaway is so big that it's going to take a minute. It's, it's going to be a thing. I want everybody who wants a historical novel to get one. So I'm going to cover all the ones that I have to give away. I have six different ones to choose from. Tell me in the comments which one you'd like and which MPL location you'd like for pickup because you have to be able to pick it up at an MPL location. Um, that's never really been a problem. I don't know why I feel the need to explain that. But um, if somebody else has, I'm going to go by who comments first. Um, so if somebody else wanted the book you wanted, you can always just pick another one. And I will send them, I can actually, yeah, since it's first come first serve, I can go ahead and send some of them out today. So you may be able to get these books as early as tomorrow or today, if you're picking up at Maine. So let's start with our first one. Yes, okay. I'm also gonna exit out of screen share so that you can see me and the books a little better. Chariot on the Mountain by Jack Ford. Uh, this is set two decades before the Civil War. It's about Kitty, who is a slave, but she's also, her, her biological father is the master, the man who owns her. When he dies, his wife decides to set her and her children free, which even post-civil, or this two decades before the Civil War, and at this point, trying to do that was a lot of work. Um, so they have to travel north, and the, uh, the lady has to fill out, the widow has to fill out a bunch of paperwork, but she's also at risk of getting kidnapped and re-enslaved by a bunch of people that are running around at the time, which there's a name for them. And it's, it's prominent in uh, Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, which is why I know it exists. Um, but that's another threat that's in this book. I think it sounds really interesting. Uh, so that's Chariot on the Mountain by Jack Ford. Our next one is The Blind Light by Stuart Evers. This is set in 1959. Two young soldiers, Drummond and Carter, uh, one of whom is working class, one of whom is privileged, 
form an intense and unlikely friendship at Doomtown, a training center that simulates the aftermath of an atomic strike. And I think this one moves forward through the decades to the present. So starting in the 50s and very much dealing with the threat of nuclear war from the Cold War. All right, The Woman Before Wallace by I think Bryn Turnbull. Uh, this is recommended for fans of The Paris Wife and the Crown. It's a novel that tells the true story of an American divorcee who captured Prince Edward heart, it's Prince Edward's heart before he abdicated the throne. And it also deals with some American, uh, American aristocracy like Gloria Morgan Vanderbilt. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're interested, if you're a Crown fan, this one might be interesting for you. Next up, we have the Elephant, the Elephant of Belfast, by S. Kirk Wallace. Uh, this is inspired by true events, and it's the vivid and moving story of a young woman zookeeper who is trying to keep an elephant protected during the German Blitz of Belfast in World War II. We have another World War II era one. This one's set in France, Sisters of the Resistance which is set, in the, set within the Paris resistance movement of World War II. This exciting novel tells of the deep involvement of Catherine Dior and two young women who risked their lives to support her efforts. Perfect for fans of Kate Quinn and Jennifer Chiaverini. Chiaverini? I have no idea how to spell that last name, but that's what that's about. And finally, swimming back to Trout River, whose author I did not write down, by Linda Ryu Feng. Um, a lyrical novel set against the backdrop of China's cultural revolution that follow, follows a father's quest to reunite his family before his precocious daughter's monumentous birthday, which Garth Greenwell calls one of the most beautiful de debuts I've read in years. So that should be fascinating. It's both set in a very different place and also in a very different time which is always what we want from historical fiction. Okay, so let's go back to our screen share. If you want any of those, go ahead and put the name of the book or, you know, what you remember, like I want the one about the elephant in Belfast in World War II as just enough so I can understand and I will send it in your name to the MPL location of your choice. And I will um, respond to your comment and tell you that you were the one that was picked. But first, let's talk about some romance titles. All right, moving on to actual books. I mean, those are actual books too, but these are the ones you can put on hold and get that way. First up, a book I have read, the first several chapters I've really enjoyed, uh, Casey McQuinton's One Last Stop. McQuiston is the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue. I don't know why I looked up the, the titles right there. Um, which I had also read and I liked a lot. I think it was a smidge long. Like I think her books are like 50 pages too long. And this one's again, over 400 pages. So it's probably going to be 50 pages too long, but I'm still super into it. So it's about August who is a cynical 23 year old who has transferred colleges and cities. She chose New York because she believes it's gonna prove her overall life view correct that there is no magic in the world. Then during her daily commute from Brooklyn to Manhattan, she sees a gorgeous, impossibly cool girl on the train, Jane. But every time August tries to kind of ask Jane out, Jane does not show up where they've arranged to meet. She doesn't even really agree to meet her. Um, and August isn't sure why, she feels rejected. But she will come to realize that she never sees Jane anywhere but the train and she always sees Jane, no matter how her commute slightly changes. And despite the fact that it's a very, it's a very busy commute, like this is a train a lot of people are on. She decides or she, she realizes that Jane can't leave the subway. She's been trapped and displaced from time she originally lived in the 1970s. So it seems there is magic in the world, but this magic is keeping her 
away from the woman that she's interested in. Obviously, as with Red, White, and Royal Blue, this is an LGBT uh, romance. Red, White, and Royal Blue was two men, and this is two women. It already has a 4.45 star from early readers on Goodreads. It has over a thousand early reviews, which is a lot. Uh, if you're interested in One Last Stop, it comes out June 1st. Moving on, The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. Okay, so Aidy and her sister are ready to do a nice road trip up to Scotland. Yes, Scotland for a friend's wedding. When her car gets rear-ended by Aidy's ex, Dylan, she realized he is also headed for the wedding. His car is totaled, so she feels the need to invite him to ride with her and her sister for the next six hours. The car is now jam-packed with people, luggage, and met and the messy history of their relationship. Um, will they make it to the wedding on time? Will this breakup be like permanent? What did I say? Will this really be the end of the road for Addie and Dylan? Given that they live in a country with real mass transit, couldn't they have just taken a train? <laughs> If you want to find out, The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary comes out June 1st. Okay, Lizzie and Dante by Mary Bly. Um, after a difficult breakup and a devastating medical diagnosis, Lizzie decides to go on one last trip. She chooses Elba, which is an island off the coast of Italy that is sun-drenched and gorgeous. There she meets Dante and his 12-year-old daughter, Etta, who is desperate for a mother. As Lizzie falls for them both, she begins to wonder if it's right to fall in love when time is short. Uh, is a short-term mother better than no mother at all? It's described as a transporting, all-consuming story about love, courage, and Italian wine. Lizzie and Dante demands to know how far we should travel to find a future worth fighting for. This is recommended for fans of Beautiful Ruins and Under the Tuscan Sun. It only has a handful of early readers, but they're raving about it. And if you're interested in Lizzie and Dante, it comes out June 1st. All right, Bluss, Blush by Jamie Brenner. This isn't actually a romance, um, but I thought it sounded interesting, so I wanted to include it. For decades, the Hollander family has gathered at their manor house on their winery. Grandmother Vivian knows that the family fortunes are depleting and that this summer may be their last in the manor house. Leah, the daughter, builds a successful career, has built a successful career despite being denied a place in the family business. So every summer when she goes to the manor house, it's a little bittersweet for her. And Sadie, the granddaughter, is planning to spend the summer in the manor house's library working on her college thesis. But when she arrives, she finds evidence in the library that her mother, her grandmother, once ran a book club for women who wanted to read scandalous books. So three generations of Hollander women will resurrect the book club and in reading, find the inspiration they need to save their family and reclaim what they deserve. Early readers have already given it over four stars on Goodreads. If you're interested in blush, it comes out June 22nd. All right, let's get into historical fiction. Got some really interesting titles, about all sorts of things from all sorts of places. Well, New York City comes up a lot. Um, the Great Mistake by Jonathan Lee. This is set in New York City at the turn of the 20th century. Uh, the main plot centers around a murder. Andrew Hashwell Green is shot dead. Uh, yeah, I was say in Central Park, but not in Central Park, on Park Avenue, in broad daylight, on Friday the 13th. It shakes the city as someone being murdered in the middle of a public place often would. So the detective assigned to the case is chasing Andrew's ghost all around the city, finding out that he was involved with everyone from courtesans to politicians, and they had his hand in several venerable New York City institutions like Central Park, the Met, and the New York Public Library. He will find a city transformed and a very private man made infamous by his public murder. 
This got a star review from Kirkus, which is, uh, I've explained this, I think. It's a journal we read that has book reviews that librarians read to choose what books to buy. And as one of our librarian puts it, Kirkus is what you read when you wanna find out why not to buy a book because they're rather withholding with the praise. But they gave this a star review because they thought it was especially good. If you are interested in The Great Mistake, it comes out June 15th. I don't know what the rumbling is. It's possible the building is going to fall down all around me, or maybe they're working on the air conditioning. It's probably the second one. Okay, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is set in Malibu in the summer of uh, 1983. It's Nina Riva's annual end of summer party. Uh, she and her siblings are famous because their father was a famous singer but also because they themselves are models and surfers in general, cool about Malibu people. Uh, everyone is looking forward to the party except Nina, who recent, was recently abandoned by her tennis star husband and her brother, Hud, who is keeping a secret from their other brother with whom he is normally inseparable. By midnight, the party will be completely out of control and by morning, the Riva Mansion will have gone up in flames. So if you want to find out how that happened, this book got a star review from Booklist, which is another publication we read, and 4.29 ratings on Goodreads from early readers. We are also getting it on audio, which tells me the acquisitions librarians think it will be popular. If you're interested in Malibu Rising, it comes out June 1st. All right. I kind of loved this title and then I read the description. I love the title because I felt like you could intuit like a tone, which is really hard to do with print. Um, and then I read the description and realized, oh, that tone is way more sinister than I was interpreting it. I was interpreting it as playful. The book is called, Everyone Knows Your Mother's a Witch. It's 1618 in the German duchy of some German word I fully cannot pronounce and I'm not even gonna try. Um, but before Germany existed as a country, but what we think of as modern Germany is where we are. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> duchy of something that starts with a W and that I'm not even gonna try to pronounce is what I put down. At this time, the black plague is spreading and the 30 years war is just starting. So naturally the town of Leonberg, uh, so naturally in the town of Leonberg, Katrina Kepler is accused of being a witch. Katrina is an illiterate widow who's known for her herbal remedies and her very successful children, including Johan, who is a mathematician and scientist. When a deranged neighbor accuses Katrina of offering her a bitter magical drink that made her sick, Johan must defend his mother from possible torture and execution. The author used historical accounts to inform this imaginative and according to the description, entertaining novel. So yeah, everyone knows your mother's a witch sounds a lot darker when you realize the context. But this book also got star reviews from both Kirkus and from Publishers Weekly always pay attention when there's more than when there's one at all but two star reviews probably a good book if you're interested it comes out june 8th all right i have this in my notes as the hidden place it is not the hidden place it is the hidden palace if you search under hidden place you will get nowhere <laughs> as i found right before i wrote it on this slide so I wrote it on the slide correctly. I just never corrected my notes. At any rate, this is an enthralling historical epic set in New York City and the Middle East in the years leading to World War I. This is the long awaited follow up to the acclaimed New York Times bestseller, The Gollum and the Genie. Helen Recker revisits her beloved characters, Shava and Ahmed, as they confront unexpected new challenges in a rapidly changing human world. Okay, so we do own The Gollum and the Ginny in both regular print and large print, if you'd like to read this first book. Uh, as it said, both books are about Shava and Ahmed. Shava is a Gollum. It's C-H-A-V-A, -A, so I think it's Shava, maybe. But anyway, 
Shava is a golem, which is a figure made out of clay and brought to life by a rabbi. Ahmed is a jinni, almost pronounced genie, but I think it's jinni, a creature born of fire and then trapped in a flask. They're both brought to New York. They become unlikely friends and possible soulmates. Kirkus went ahead and gave a start to this book. They may have given a start to the first one too, and I just don't know one way or the other. Um, but they also are even more withholding of starred reviews for you know a second or third book. So that's sort of why I wanted to include this, even though I don't include series installments very often. If you're interested in The Hidden Palace, it comes out June 8th, the day before my birthday. All right. Ridge Line by Michael Punk? Pumke? Don't know. This is set in 1866 in an Ameri America that is still recovering from the Civil War. Colonel Henry Carrington intends to build a road for Western expansion, including a fort in the middle of Lakota territory. Um, actually, he's going to put it in hunting grounds that are critical for their survival. So that's not going to go over well. The Lakota have their current chief, Crazy Horse. He is one of the most respected chiefs they've ever had. Colonel Carrington is using his troops to constantly attack the Lakota. Crazy Horse will send a war party to respond. The novel is based on real people and events and is from the author of The Revenant, which was a popular book, very successful book that turned into a movie that finally got Leonardo DiCaprio the Oscar. Uh, in the end, the story will grapple with essential questions of conquest and justice that still echo today. We are also getting it on audio if you're interested in the audiobook. And if you're interested in the Ridgeline, it comes out June 1st. All right, our final book of the day, An Unlikely Spy by Rebecca Starford. So this is about Evelyn. She's uh, ambitious, clever, smart, however you want to put it, far beyond the expectations of a woman for 1940s Britain. She earns a scholarship to a prestigious academy and then moves on to Oxford and gets her degree. Uh, when she's at Oxford or when she's leaving Oxford, she is recruited for MI5. MI5 is, if I understand correctly, the British equivalent of the CIA. So it's an intelligence agency, although they call them counterintelligence agencies. I don't know why that's different, but at any rate, there's a secret society in Britain at the time that wants to form an alliance with the Germans. Evelyn has to pose as a Nazi sympathizer, sympathizer to get into the group and to gather evidence against them. Somehow the people she loves, people Evelyn loves who she's closest to get involved in this. And she ends up with an impossible decision which is choosing between her country or the people she loves. Beguiling and Dark, An Unlikely Spy is a fascinating story of deception and sacrifice based on the, real, but the history of real people within the British intelligence community. So this has positive ratings from a bunch of early readers on Goodreads. If you're interested in An Unlikely Spy, it comes out June 1st. Okay, final thoughts. Don't forget, if you would like a free book this week, if you were one of the first six people to ask, Pick one of these six books. Hey, yeah. uh, tell me where, which MPL location you want it sent to, and you will get the book, possibly even by today. I think at least one of them isn't out yet, which I did not write down. <laughs> uh, one of them comes out, this one com came out April 6th. Oh yeah, Sisters of the Resistance doesn't come out till June. So that one is, is a, it's a, I mean, they're all arcs, but this is a genuine arc and that you can read it and review it before it even comes out. Um, on Goodreads, I've been putting up discussion posts, posts that contain any books that I had to eliminate from today's show to keep it from being too long. And, you know, a description of it, whether or not it got any starred reviews, whether or not we're buying it in audio or large print. I will try to have that up 
by either the end of today or tomorrow. We'll see. Um, and I've also been putting up discussion posts about nonfiction titles that you might be interested in because I've, I'm fighting it harder and harder to get them in to this episode or any episode. Um, so I've been breaking them up by subject matter and I'll put one up probably by the end of the week. Uh, if you haven't signed up for our NPL pre-orders newsletter, you should do that. The link is in the comments below. Join me next week. We're going to talk about June's science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Thanks for watching, guys. And I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye.